An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Do not develop. Fear, hate, anxiety, resentment, these are worthless. If you ever feel this way, observe it and say, hmm, is this really, really the best attitude for me to have? And you can always move, do your best to go back to neutral and say, hmm, this is interesting, or this is very interesting, or this is overwhelmingly interesting, or I don't really like this, but for some reason I must experience it, see it, and there must be some purpose to my being exposed to whatever it is. There's always a purpose to everything in everyone's life, whether they believe it or not, whether the person is completely isolated from civilization, living in the Stone Age, or whether they are on Wall Street or in Hong Kong in the high rises running finance. Everything happens for a reason. When you operate with good intentions, when you are in your integrity, when you have very good boundaries, which means that you do not suffer from nice-itis. Nice-itis is a disease, a disease of being in the body, discomfort. Nice-itis is afraid of saying no. The magic of saying no. I heard once that saying no and saying yes are equally powerful. The reason for that is both of them are a clear expression of your truth in any given moment. When you're clearly expressing what your preference is, you eliminate all confusion, all misconception, all, um, all fussing that happens when you are wavering in your conviction towards any decision, right? As soon as you don't know how to say no, you are screwed. So often people get so wrapped up in not wanting to say no because they don't want to offend people. They don't want to hurt someone's feelings. And I know that I'm talking to myself here because that has been a lifelong pattern of mine is not wanting to hurt people's feelings, not wanting to be the person that, um, you know, is a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy or whatever, you know, like whatever the things that we tell ourselves to keep ourselves from being authentic, it's just lies. They're just lies. So holding yourself apart from the word no, you're really hurting yourself. That's that's really how it boils down to. You're really hurting no one but yourself. Because that means you will not call a bucket of shit shit, you might say it's a vase of roses. And there are many people who get that mixed up, even though they are distinctly two different things. Mm -hmm. Remember this, if it smells like shit, and it looks like shit, it's manure. And manure can be turned to fertilizer. So you can use something that's not so pleasant to help fertilize and grow your mind in awareness. But don't call the manure roses. Know the difference. Grow up and accept that you are living in a world of contradictions, of contrasts. A world that is going through a tremendous transformation. 
And within this process, you are going to encounter stories that are unpleasant. You are going to have to uncover things that you don't want to look at. It's not negative. Negative is when you start to put out hate, when you start to act hopeless and condemn. That's negativity, when you hurt another. But if you do not allow yourself to discuss what is going on, and if someone says, this is negative, we can't talk about this. Whose voice is that? The word no inherently isn't bad. You know, I really want you to hear that. No is not inherently bad. And yes isn't inherently good. You can really hurt yourself with yes, too. Just like you can hurt yourself with no. I mean, yes is is a slippery, slippery slope. Because if you're saying yes to a whole bunch of concerns and a whole litany of of um, requests of you, of your time, of your energy. Um, if you're saying yes to things that you don't really want to participate in, you start feeling overwhelmed. You start feeling all of these feelings of not being in control, of, of being out of control actually, and you start spiraling in your life and then getting anxious and overwhelmed and depressed. And then quickly you start going like, and this is you going down a toilet. You feel me? Like, that is what happens when you don't learn how to use the word no appropriately. How do you think leprosy was healed? Because people say, that is negative, that's ugly, let's run away from it. No, there was a priest named Father Damien or some such, and he took the lepers on an island called Molokai in the chain of islands called Hawaii. He was very compassionate. He looked at the people whose flesh was rotting and horrible, who, who the public ran away from for centuries. He decided to help in this, in this darkness, in this ugliness. And so we use this analogy so that you can understand the larger scheme of things. As you start to uncover and recognize unpleasant situations, there may be people who call you names or who say, you are lowering the frequency, let's just talk about good things. That's escapism, that's denial. And if you are going to want to escape from knowing the stories, the fullness of them, the good and the bad, then you are going to lock yourself in your own hell of mind control. Because you only want to see the good side. Once you volunteer, to find out about what's going on. Observe your response to what you are finding out. If you can accept the fullness of stories and say, aha, this is not pleasant, however, I am now more informed about the general picture. And now I will go cook a good supper. If you do not want to know, then you will be stopped in your tracks and then you will be very befuddled because you'll not want to know the whole story, you'll move into denial, denial creates confusion, eventually you become sick and delusional and people move away from you because you do not want to know. And this is what's happening generally in the world. Why do you think there's so much entertainment? You have 24 plus hours of entertainment every day all around the world. It is to keep people from thinking. You have to think. And there are going to be things that come along that other people really want you to do and participate in. And you got to get used to saying no. Because you have your own energy tank. You have your own energy well that, you know, is your auric field. It is your life force energy. It is your chi. And you have, on one hand, you have limitless possibility and limitless energy. But on a very human, corporeal way, and, and, and that that element in reality you only have so many hours in a day you only have so much energy that you're willing to spend on things that are not going to light you up or fill you up or you know there's only so many projects that you can put your energy towards there are there's finiteness within the infinity and you got to respect that finiteness otherwise you're just going to start feeling bogged down and that's really the truth of it 
So do yourself a favor, do your projects a favor, do everything in your life a favor and learn how to say no. Say it with me. No. No. Like practice those facial muscle exercises. No. <laughs> no. <laughs>